Now that Tim Poletti has officially become a GOP presidential candidate, he's stepping up visits to the early primary states and important swing states. Newsmax TV caught up with the former Minnesota governor in Coral Gables, Florida, for an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview. We started out by asking Poletti about his pledge to tell the truth about the serious problems facing the country in a way President Obama is not. Well, we have a country that is in big trouble, as you know, and that's measured a number of ways, but one is this. We are sinking, we are drowning in debt and deficit. He's shown no a willingness to tackle it. In fact, he's made it dramatically worse since he's become president. The deficit in this country, the debt in this country has essentially tripled. And uh, you know, he's heading us in the wrong direction. And if you're gonna fix this problem, you have to say there's no sacred cows. That's why I went to Iowa yesterday and did what people expect, would say you can't do, which is to say we're gonna phase out ethanol subsidies. That's why I came to Florida today to do what people say you can't do, which is to talk about for younger people raising gradually the retirement age for Social Security and means testing part of Social Security, the COLA for wealthy people and maintaining it for middle income and lower income and down the list. But President Obama refuses to do those things. He refuses to lead. He refuses to say those things. And that's not going to fix the country's problems. He's got a you know, uh, campaign plan, but he doesn't really have an economic plan. Can the country survive with a current level of spending in Washington? No. I mean, this is not just the rhetoric of somebody who's running for office. If you just look at this as a matter of grade school arithmetic, you can look at the chart on spending obligations. You can look at the chart on the revenue that's coming in. Those two things don't line up. They don't even come close. And this will sink the country from within if we don't tackle it. You say you're willing to make tough decisions to get America back on the right track. If you were president tomorrow, what would be the first thing you would do? Repeal Obamacare. Uh, we have a, a crisis in this country. It's draining and putting incredible pressure on the budgets of families, the budgets of businesses and government, and it's health care costs. And it has gone up faster than almost anything else. It, it is the fastest growing thing, and that needs to be fixed. But he didn't fix it. All he did is expand access to a broken system, but he didn't fix the system. And the answer is not to make it a government system and drag it into Washington, D.C., and have it be a bureaucracy and a top-down system. The answer is to, if we can afford it, give people help directly. Let them choose what's best for them and their families in a market, not have it be a government takeover. And that's how we approached it in Minnesota. Here in Florida, the former lieutenant governor, led, or I should say the former attorney general, uh, led the fight, the charge against the individual mandate of Obamacare. Yes, and I'm glad for that. And I joined into that lawsuit as an amicus or one of the parties lending my voice to the notion that Obamacare is not only a bad idea, that it's unconstitutional. And as you know, the federal district court here in Florida agreed. And so my hope is that the courts will eliminate or declare uh, Obamacare unconstitutional. It's a dramatic overreach by the federal government. They're requiring people, the federal government from Washington, D.C., requiring people to buy a good or a service for the first time in this nation's history, and it's a dramatic uh, breach of their authority, I believe. On another health care matter, one that affects millions of seniors nationwide, and especially in South Florida, Medicare. We asked Poletti about Congressman Paul Ryan's budget plan, which calls for changes to Medicare, and whether he supports it. Well, I applaud Congressman Ryan for his courage. You know, when President Obama wasn't leading, was being more or less silent, on the national debt and deficit. Here we have a congressman from Wisconsin stepping into the void and providing national bold leadership when the president should have been doing that. So I applaud him for his courage. I support the general direction of Congressman Ryan's plan. However, I have my own plan that we're working on that we'll be putting forward. It'll have some differences than Congressman Ryan. So for example, he didn't address Social Security. I will. Uh, we'll have some differences in our Medicare approach. And so uh, I applaud him for his courage, but we'll have our own plan when it comes to fixing Medicare, and it needs to be fixed. Look at this statistic. Of all the costs of Medicare, the payroll taxes and the premiums that people are paying into Medicare only pay for about half the cost of the program. And it is going towards financial insolvency quickly. And I think when people know that fact, that we're only actually paying for about half the actual cost, uh, it, of course the program has to change. Of course, but we need to do that in a way that is protects and preserves seniors so that if you're on the program now or anywhere near the eligibility for it now that you're not impacted, it'll affect the next generation. Representative Ryan's plan, of course, for Medicare included vouchers. Uh, is privatization also part of the solution of the Social Security crisis? Well, we live in the iPad world 
and so we need to give people options. I don't think we should force it on them, but we, I think we should say to anybody at or in the program now, if you want to, you should just stay in the current program. But for the future generation, let's give them a whole bunch of options and let them choose what's best for them or their family. You say you're not entertainer-in-chief. You would not be the entertainer-in-chief. What exactly do you mean by that? Well, you know, of course, there's a premium on people who are the loudest or, you know, comedians or whatever. But these are serious times for the country, and they need serious people with real solutions. And so I always encourage people, look, if you're looking for the loudest candidate or the person who's going to, you know, go on TV and act like a clown, that's not going to be me. But if you're looking for somebody who's led in a difficult environment as a conservative in Minnesota and got things done on taxes, on spending, public employee pension reform and more, then I'm your candidate. And uh, so this isn't about who can be, you know, loud and funny. It's about who can lead the nation and get this thing fixed. And the hour is late and the country's in big trouble. So this ain't a time for clowning around. It's time to get stuff done. And finally, why is Tim Pawlenty the most qualified candidate to be president? Well, every Republican candidate is going to say, hey, look, I'm for cutting taxes, I'm for reducing spending, I'm for market-based health care reforms, I'm for school reform and choice and accountability, I'm for public employee pension reform, I'm for you know, being tough on terrorism, I'm for standing with Israel and the like. But you shouldn't listen to the words. You should look and see who actually has done that and who actually has the fortitude to stand in there under difficult circumstances and get it done in, in a tough environment, in my case, Minnesota. And I've done it. So the words and the deeds match up. Cato Institute gave only four governors in this country an A grade for fiscal management, and I'm one of them. The other three aren't running for president. Despite two terms as governor, Polenny acknowledged that as a leader of a Midwestern state, he has some work to do on the name recognition front. But he tells us that he's already becoming more well-known and is confident that will continue. For Newsmax TV, I'm Ashley Martella.